Hey there, my name is Andy McFarlane and I'm a real estate investor. And sometimes that's got a bad stigma with people, right? They say, well, a real estate investor is going to try to steal your equity or they're going to give you an unfair low ball offer, right? Well, what I want to do is kind of today on the whiteboard, pull back that curtain, show you the numbers and kind of explain to you why investors make the offers that they do on properties and also the service we provide to sellers in specific circumstances. Because I've had hundreds of sellers over the years that have said afterwards, wow, it was great working with you. I'm so glad we found you. It was so much better than the alternative, which a lot of times is just listing with the real estate agent. So let's use a typical house, for example. In Utah, my market, a typical house is about $150,000, give or take. So here's your typical house, $150,000. So people tell me all the time, well, Andy, my house is worth $150,000. Now, where it might sell for $150,000, let's, let's talk about what money is actually in your pocket from that. So to sell a house for $150,000, the typical thing is you go to a real estate agent. That's where you find most of your buyers, right? So first, you get yourself a listing agent. So a listing agent takes typically 3% for the, for the listing. So that is their commission, right? So your $150,000 is less 3% to the listing agent. The buyer's agent is going to take 3%, which again comes out of your pocket. Buyer's agent. The seller pays for that. And then also, buyers that are buying a house for $150,000, that starter home, uh, they're getting a loan. So what they need is closing costs. And they generally ask, I mean, 99, nine times out of 10, they ask for the seller to pay for that so they can roll that into their loan. And the typical amount for that is 3%. And I see it time and time again. They always ask for 3% for their closing costs. So buyer's closing costs. Which it is their closing costs, but they ask the seller to pay for those things. So that comes off the top. And then you've got about 1% that is, uh, that is you know, seller's closing costs that are actually your closing costs. So you can see right there, that all adds up to about 10% off of that price. So even if your house is in immaculate shape, you list it with an agent, and you're looking at paying 10% off of that that's gonna, you know, if it's in great shape. So a $150,000 house in a perfect scenario, in perfect shape house, you're gonna actually net in your pocket $135,000, right? Let's talk about the time over here in blue of what these things are gonna take. Now, if you have a house that is in great shape that you're going to list for $150,000, you're going to find yourself an agent, you're going to sign up that listing, and then they're going to post it on the MLS and put a sign in the yard. Then the buyer's agents are going to come through your house, everyone's going to be walking through looking for it. When you finally find somebody, hopefully soon, that wants to buy your house, they're going to make an offer. Now, are they going to offer you $150,000? Depends on the market. Sometimes they do yes, and sometimes they'll offer you a little beneath that, right? Everyone wants to get it for a little bit less than asking price. So let's assume, though, that they offer the full price. You get that full price, then you've still got to wait for the buyer to do inspections, they've got appraisals, they've got all these things, and the loan, to close the loan, typically in today's market, it's about, you know, it's at least 30 and generally 45 days to close that loan. So in a perfect world, it's gonna take you about 60 days to get that price. Um, it's gonna take you about 60 days to get, you know, 10% of your price if they offer you full price. So 60 days to getting your $135,000 in your pocket. Now this is assuming your house is in perfect shape. Now most houses, they're not in perfect shape, especially people that call me, they said, look Andy, this house needs some repairs. We understand that, right? Well, most houses I've found, they do need repairs. A typical repair figure, carpet, paint, kitchen, bathroom updates for a house of a, you know, a starter home, you know, 1,500 to 2,000 square foot starter home is about $20,000. So that $20,000, of course, is gonna take you, you know, time to do those repairs and it's also gonna cost you the money to put into your home so then you can sell it for this, this max value, right? So the time to do those type of repairs, this is what I do for a living. I've got crews that help me do this. We can turn a house over in four to six weeks. So for a, for a homeowner, you've probably experienced some home repairs, maybe remodeling a bathroom or just getting carpet. You understand that kind of rig and roll and what that can take. Um, but to do a full house remodel, you might be talking, let's be optimistic and it's gonna say it takes six to eight weeks. And this is before you can even put it on the market to list it for this high price, right? So you've got a lot of time in there. You've got the headaches with kind of doing all that stuff. And not, let's not forget the money expense, the $20,000 is an estimate that it's going to take to do those repairs, right? So let's take $20,000 off of that. So now you're left with, at the end of that, you've got $115,000 net in your pocket for a house that you said, yeah, but that's worth $150,000. And the time it took to do that was, you know, two months here in repairs and two months here in that. So at your best, you know, you've got a house that's going to sell in four months after you've done the repairs, after you put the money into that, and you're hoping all that time that the market doesn't change, that you can get that. 
Well, there's another solution you can do. You can call somebody like me, a real estate or investor, and say, look, what will you pay me cash today for my property? And I say today, but generally it's you know two to three days or you know a couple of weeks. But I'll close on your time when you say, look, look at my house, look at the repairs, what's the cash price you'll pay today? So we don't have to pay any real estate agents, any buyer's agents, you know, any buyer's closing costs, all that stuff. I don't ask for any repairs. You'll say, how much money will you put in my pocket immediately, Andy? So you can have that known quantity, so you can have be done with your headaches as soon as possible and get on with your life. A lot of times, the quote that you're gonna get from me is a lot more reasonable than you'd think. And a lot of times you look at that and say, but the time savings and the headache savings and that just knowing when we can move and get out of stuff, you know, that's a great offer, right? And besides that, you know, sometimes there's circumstances where people are living in the house and you need to have time to move or you need to have time to close first and then get the stuff out of your house. And not to mention too, this is assuming, these costs are assuming that uh, there's no mortgage on the property. Well, a lot of times, these four months that it's taken to do that, you're paying a mortgage that whole time. A typical thousand dollar mortgage during those four months, that costs you $4,000 right off the top of this because you have to make that payment to the bank the whole time. So this number could be less a mortgage payment too. Look, you owe it to yourself to give me a call and just say, look, here's the house I've got. It needs repairs, but what's the bottom line, Andy? What's the cash in my pocket immediately or whenever you'd like to close? I'll meet with you, I'll hear your circumstances, and I'll give you that number. And if it's something that works out for you, great. I've helped hundreds of sellers, and they all say the same thing at the end. Wow, it was so easy, I can't believe it. You handled all the details, and they love it. So I was just trying to use this to show you guys a comparison what you might get from a typical transaction, listing with the real estate agent, the time involved with that, the headache, repairs, and things. Um, and listen, working with an investor on this, um, am I gonna offer you 115 for your house? I can tell you it depends. It depends on the house, the neighborhood, it depends on the repairs it needs, it depends on a lot of different things. But what I can tell you is people have found that the offer that we do end up giving them is very fair. They'll say, well Andy, if I sell today and I don't have to pay all the mortgage payments and pay the taxes and I don't have to do the repairs and I don't have any of that headache, you know, and I'm only gonna, you know, my bottom line, I'm only gonna get, you know, 5,000 or 10,000 less than I was before without the headaches, without going through the what ifs of what's it gonna sell for, what if there, you know, these repairs are there, what if they're more or less, you know, look, they say that known quantity, a lot of times people want that peace of mind being done today on their timeline. It's worth the extra five or maybe 10,000, um, and it really depends on the house. Sometimes you even net more with selling to an investor than you would with going through the traditional route, just because, you know, uh, we know how to do our repairs and you might spend 20 in a house where we'll spend 10 or we might spend 20 where you would spend 30 or $40,000 doing repairs that you know may or may not be necessary to do in this market. So again, you owe it to yourself to call uh, me and just, and just let me give you a quote on your house. Let me talk to you about your specific circumstances. Let me save you some time and headache. So give me a call and I'd love to hear from you and talk to you about your specific circumstances.